do we do with Eaton, a classic industrial with huge international exposure that manufactures electrical control products, power management systems, hydraulics, truck transmissions, and aerospace systems? Eaton just reported another candidly not-so-hot quarter today, and the stock's down more than 16% from its mid-May highs. Now, Eaton delivered a three-cent earnings beat off of a very reduced $1.13 basis, but the company's revenues came in lower than expected, and even on a constant currency basis, they were down 1% year-over-year. All of Eaton's divisions, from electrical products and systems to vehicles, hydraulics, and aerospace, saw their sales decline. And even when you back out the damage caused by the strong dollar, only two out of five were up. To make matters worse, Eaton's guidance for the, for the next quarter came in well below what Wall Street was looking for. And the company cut its full-year earnings forecast pretty substantially. And its estimates for organic growth are now well below companies like General Electric or Honeywell. But expectations were low enough and the stock had fallen far enough going into the quarter that even though the stock opened down sharply, it still managed to close up 31 cents at the end of the day. So let's take a closer look with Sandy Cutler, the straight shooting chairman and CEO of Eaton, who's retiring next May. Hear more about this quarter and whether his company can turn things around. Mr. Cutler, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks, Jim. Good to be with you. All right, Sandy, uh, I'm kind of struck by the fact that your view of the world uh, has, uh, to me, turned negative in the sense that you're guiding down somewhat substantially, and yet I had felt that you had a lot of momentum. So what's going on? Well, maybe, maybe three things that we, we tried to share with investors today, Jim. Uh, number one, we had, um, I, I think, a strong second quarter. Our profits up 5% in spite of, of volumes being down and our markets being, being off. Uh, really making it the old-fashioned way, increasing segment margins and significantly reducing, reducing structural costs. What we saw in the second quarter was we saw bookings in a number of our businesses not come in as strongly as we would have liked to set up a stronger second half. And so our view is that we're not likely to see a lot of additional expansion uh, except, except for the normal seasonal expansion for the balance of this year. And that's why we did the second thing that we talked about today. We, Announced a $145 million restructuring program, $120 million to spend this year, $25 million in 2016, which will give us a year-to-year -year benefit of $130 million next year. And so we think in these slower growth markets, it's, uh, it's really appropriate to get at this issue of structural cost and ensure that we can provide some propellant to EPS for next year. And then the third thing we announced today is something we've been talking about for some time, which is our cash redeployment um, uh, program. And really the highlight of that is that we expect to, between our dividend and share buybacks, have a return to shareholders of 4 to 5 percent each year. Okay. Uh, I know that I felt some, there was some weakness. The organic growth guide down was, I felt, substantial. Uh, electrical systems, organic sales were down 4 percent, and you sound a little negative about that. Uh, the uh, hydraulics declined 11 percent organic sales. Is it time maybe to um, reassess whether hydraulics fits into the uh, portfolio of Eaton, given the fact that it's it's been bringing you down. Yeah, hydraulics this year will be somewhere on the order of off about 13 percent from the peak. Uh, clearly, been pretty awful market conditions between both global agriculture turning down, global mining turning down, oil and gas being down, and then the construction markets being down in in uh, China. So, we believe we're close to to the bottom. It's hard always to call that at this point. It's a business we were very pleased with the margin performance, stronger than what people expected in the second quarter. And by the time we finish these restructuring uh, periods, we think a strong business. But clearly, we've always said, Jim, that businesses have got to perform to be part, part of Eaton. And so we'll continue to monitor that as we come through our restructuring program. Okay, uh, aerospace down 7% from second quarter. Organic sales declined 2%. I know there was negative currency translation there, but uh, we know that Boeing has been saying very positive things and Honeywell has been saying very positive things about aerospace. So how do we reconcile it? Is it, or, is it a, a particular kind of, of, of part that Eaton sells that's not doing well enough? Well, our, our organic sales were actually up three when you take out a, a large um, series of, of engineering programs that we were paid for in the second quarter last year. So we think very much in line with other companies. We did share, however, though, if you looked at bookings in the second quarter, the commercial side of the business was up um, uh, three to four percent. We saw a very significant down on military. That's largely timing, about 30 percent off in bookings. Okay. And then aftermarket was negative for the first quarter. We've seen a number of quarters. We remain convinced that this aerospace business is a three to four percent uh, market grower with very strong um, 
uh, secular trend on the commercial side, so feel very good about that business. Cindy, what would uh, make it so that you think that things it, could turn a little more for organ organic? Here, I'm reading a Wells Fargo piece. On weaker conditions, organic growth minus uh, zero to minus one from two point uh, to two to three, approximately 15 cent net restructuring, reduced guidance beneath consensus. What would make it so that the world in the world would make it so that that is possible that you're being too conservative? Well, let's just start and talk about the U.S., Jim, for a minute. Uh, you know, the Fed is out now with a forecast for GDP this year of 1.8 to 2.2. That's versus the 3 percent when they right. began this year. Um, clearly a, a lower growth market. Within that market, we see strength in residential. We see strength in the non-oil and gas and non-mining portion of, of non-risk construction. So that's about 4 percent without those two included. Clearly, we're seeing strength in, in light vehicle sales, and we're seeing strength in heavy duty. The big negatives around the world today is China's growing slower than it's being reported. Clearly, global ag is off very hard. Global construction and mining, not a positive. South America is troublesome. And so we're dealing with this industrial production numbers on a global basis of around a percent and a half, um, and maybe GDP on a two and a half percent basis. So while these aren't terrible, they're not the kind of growth numbers you know, that we all are used to seeing. Um, it's hard to point to a specific country that is stre strengthening significantly on a total basis. There are individual segments, as I just talked about, that are attractive. And that's why we felt really the most important thing we can really be doing for investors right now is, and running our company really uh, prudently is we've got to get another layer of cost out. And that's why we're, we're committed to this $145 million restructuring right, program. Well, last question, That Sandy. allows us then right. to maximize. Are, are we the only country? Are we the only country with any real strength? Well, I, no, I think there are areas in the Middle East that, that are quite strong at this point. We do think India is recovering, but it's not big enough to make a big, right. big difference. I think the U.S. is, is the best in, in the lot at the current time. Wow. Okay, well, look, I, I wish you the best of luck, Sandy. Uh, you've done, done a good job. What a tough, tough economy we have. Sandy Cutler, the chairman and CEO of Eaton. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, Jim. Dave Money will be back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.